Now the things change as we go to the second derivative. So let's look at the second derivative. Algebraically, the second derivative appears in this second-degree Taylor approximation of the function f of t0 plus f prime of t0 times t minus t0 plus f double prime of t0 over 2 times t minus t0 squared. So that's the significance of the second derivative. It's just a coefficient with the second degree polynomial of the Taylor expansion. Now, what about geometry? What does it mean to have second derivative from geometric point of view? Well, from geometric point of view, we would like to approximate the given trajectory by something simple of degree 2. Now, the obvious thing of degree 1 was the tangent line. What is going to be a replacement? Well, what is going to be the degree 2 approximation of this curve at that point? And remember, we are looking for the local approximation, so that locally this curve looks like that nice curve of degree 2. Well, there is no obvious choice at this time, so let's look at physics first. And from physics point of view, we have arbitrary motion of a particle, and then we say that that arbitrary motion can be approximated by this linear motion first. Plus what? Well, of course, of course, Taylor approximation says that it should be a dead term. And what is the significance of that second derivative from physics point of view? Well, that is the acceleration. If this was the velocity, which is the, the first derivative, then acceleration is also a vector. And that acceleration is simply the second derivative of this position function. So the significance of the second derivatives uh, in case of motion of a particle is that those represent forces or accelerations. Uh, so coming back to geometry, what should, what should we look for? as second-degree approximation. Well, inspired by either algebra or physics, we can think about the simplest second-degree function. And that would be something like y equals x squared. So that is the standard parabola. What about second degree approximation from physics point of view? What if we look at the motion that is equal to that second degree thing? Or in other words, what if we consider the acceleration being constant? In a similar way that uh, we may look at linear motion as a motion when the velocity is constant. Now, what if acceleration is constant? What can we say about the motion in that case? Well, we have a very natural example that we face every day of particles moving under constant acceleration. The gravity acceleration is well, can be assumed to be constant to some extent locally. And uh, we know that any particle moving under the constant acceleration will have trajectory of parabola, right? this projectile trajectory.
is always a parabola. Well, don't we want them to approximate the curve geometrically by a parabola? Well, probably we should, as suggested by those two points of view, but unfortunately, what would be... Well, unfortunately, we cannot recognize geometrically parabolas. So, to illustrate my point, I would represent two... I would draw two parabolas here, and I will take this piece of that parabola and this piece of that parabola, and I will ask you to distinguish these two pieces, just in case I erase the rest of the parabola. So if I am to start with the piece like this, should I extend this piece? Is this a piece of that parabola or a piece of this parabola? And I don't know the answer, I cannot see it. Because to me, this piece of vertical parabola looks exactly the same as this piece of slanted parabola. So geometrically, we cannot distinguish parabolas. And that's a problem. So if we see this short piece of a curve, is it going to be a piece of that parabola or a piece of this parabola? All right, so it doesn't work geometrically for us. What we can distinguish geometrically is the circles. If I give you a short piece, you can imagine extending that piece to the full circle. And we don't expect a lot of ambiguity about this circle. All right? This short piece determines the whole circle completely. It determines the radius of the circle. It cannot be a short piece of huge circle or a short piece of small circle. And we can even guess where the center should be, which direction should go to the center. So, what we can approximate any curve locally by geometrically is a circle. Is that circle an object of degree 2? Well, probably it is, because uh, in the standard coordinate system, a circle can be written as something like uh, x minus x0 squared. x0 is the coordinate of the center plus y minus y0 squared equals radius squared. So it is determined by the second degree equation. So it makes sense to think of circle of an object of degree 2. 